delight today to welcome Reverend Dr. Joyce Reynolds, coming back home to City of Light once again. Forgive me today, I had a uh, leg procedure yesterday, or Friday, and I'm walking a little slow. So, I don't get to run around around here today. <laughs> How about that? Well, you know what, though? I decided I can fly. Amen. I decided I can fly! This is one of my favorite songs, and I just adore it, I just love it, and every time I hear it, I think, I gotta go high. I gotta go higher. I gotta go higher. I gotta go higher. And the truth is, I gotta go higher. Now, yeah. I want to talk to you about your life. Yeah, your life. Not mine. Yours. But I'll share some of my life to tell you about your life. Back a long time ago, pretty long time ago, 39 years ago, prior to that, I was an alcoholic. And I had a lot of negative thoughts. I had a lot of negative beliefs about myself. I had resentments, I had anger, I didn't like my mother, I didn't like my father, I didn't like a lot of people. I get even. I could do that stuff, and I did it well. Now, maybe you did a little of that too. I don't know. But when I crashed into alcoholism and turned my life and my will over to the care of God, to the care of Christ, consciousness. My whole life changed and I realized that my thoughts had been holding me back. That the thoughts that I carried about myself were not true. I wonder how many thoughts you have about yourself that are not true. You say, oh, I've given it up. I'm not that person anymore. But are you acting like that person? Are you thinking like that person? Are you still reacting like that person? Maybe not, but maybe so. It's really interesting how we can think that we've changed our thinking and that we're very positive, but you have a friend who says, I'm going on an airplane flight. I'm going somewhere to Europe. Oh, you better be careful. Don't you know there's terrorists out there? You know, you, you better be careful. Uh, I hope you have a good trip. Is that positive? Is that putting out the right signal? Instead of saying, go, have a wonderful time, enjoy. Sometimes we find ourselves doing that. When we see somebody with a new haircut, we say, well, that style really fits you well. But I like the other one. This is good for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Or, Maybe not, thank you. <laughs> but the truth is that we're pulling them down, we're speaking negatively, and it's not a good thing. Now, what are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about yourself? Are you hiding the fact that you're gay? Are you hiding the fact that you're female or male, or that you have a problem? Are you hiding the fact that there is something in you that you don't like? Then change it. Change it. Accept the fact that you're gay. Accept the fact that you're Christian. Accept the fact that you are who you are. And have a strong self-esteem. A strong self-esteem. You gotta love yourself, gang. You absolutely have to love yourself. You have to feel good about yourself. Now, when you change your thoughts, you gotta stretch your mind. You gotta stretch them. You gotta stretch your mind to get rid of all those thoughts that Mama told you about yourself. You gotta stretch your mind to let go of all those things Daddy said too, and your brothers and sisters, and the 
the priests, the ministers, the rabbis, you got to let go. You got to let go. Those, those are not who you are. Somebody said to me, you're really big. You got big bones just like your dad. I love the fact that I have big bones. Look at my bones. They're small. As soon as I found out I was not large bone, somebody said to me, you're not large bone. I said, I'm not. They said, no, you're not. I started dropping weight. Because I believed that I had to look like my dad. Crazy, yeah, but true. You see, what happens is we get these ideas about what we're supposed to be like from the collective consciousness. We don't want to go with collective consciousness. Step out in the crowd. Step out. Gay, straight, doesn't matter. Christian, doesn't matter. Just be who you are. You gotta express your talents, your abilities, your time, and your mind. Now God didn't say, beg me and I might give it to you. God didn't say that. God didn't say plead. I look through the Bible, I look for plead, plead that you get what you want. I didn't find it. Did you find it? No. I didn't find any of that. I saw, ask and it is given. Act as though. I saw all that. I saw what God was saying. You are love. You are God's child. Yes. So when are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? No, we're going to love the Muslims. We're going to love the, the atheists. We're going to love everybody. Because we are full of love. And our love and our light, yes, light is healing. That gorgeous man that was singing. Where'd he go? There he is, there he is. What do you think of him? You had the brightest aura, honey. You had the brightest aura going. Your aura kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I saw angels around you, honey. Angels. Well, they're around all of us, but you want to know something? You got to let it out. You got to accept it. You got to say, yeah, that's who I am. Yeah, that's who I am. Say it. Yes, I am. I didn't hear it. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Yeah, that's who I am. And I am means God in you. God in you. Whatever you say with the word I am, you are proclaiming your divinity. Let's not use I am stupid. I am dumb. You're saying God's stupid. God's dumb. God can't make it. You have to believe. Now there's a certain amount of belief that comes when we start demonstrating God's grace in our life. When God's grace enters into our life, we start to see the magic happen. The magic just happens. It's like everything we touch just turns our way. Not always in the beginning, because you have to go sometimes a little further in what you're doing to see that God's grace is pulling through. To see that God is there. But here's what our little small minds do. We get afraid. We fear. Oh, that won't work. Oh, God didn't give it to me quick enough. I want it quick. Quick, God, quick. God gives it to us in divine right timing. And guess what? Now, one minute, one second before divine right time. It's got to be set up in divine right time. In order for you, when you change your thinking to change your life, in order for you to have what you want, you have to believe 
and you have to walk it through as God says. Divine right action. And he, things will begin to change for you. When you start to get rid of that negative, negative thinking that you thought wasn't negative thinking, your life starts to change. The magic happens. Out of nowhere and no way it happens. Think about that. You think, I don't see how I could get some unexpected money. I don't see how I could sell this church. I don't see how I could get well. I don't see how I could get that new Mercedes I got out there. Out of nowhere and no way it happens. My son-in-law bought that car for me. Oh, wow, a brand new Mercedes? Somebody said, George, you're thinking right. I am, out of nowhere and no way it just happened. He said, I'm not gonna let you drive an older car. I don't like it when you get on the road. He said, you go all over the place. You need a new car. I said, yeah, I do. You want to know something? And I know this is true with you. I have a hard time receiving. A hard time receiving. How many identify with that? Yes. Look at the hands. We got to open up because there is a law of, of reciprocity. To say it. Reciprocity. Anyway, you know what it is. <laughs> I knew it this morning. Uh, but that says what you put out, you get back. Whatever you put out, money, it's coming back to you. Love, it's going to come back to you. Kindness, it's going to come back to you. Whatever you put out, it's going to swing back. Here's the way it works. Everything is energy. Everything, and it's vibrating. And so when you send something out, sometimes it goes way out, but it's gonna come back, baby. It's gonna come back. All that negative stuff that's being spewed out in the world, it comes back. Trust me, I know. I know from the old days, because I never knew. Why is this happening to me? Anybody else ever say that? Why is this happening to me? Yeah. And it's happening to you because you're negative. But not anymore. Not anymore. Because you know that there is a law of attraction that is always working in your life. That law says what I put out, I'll bring back to me. That law says as I think positive, I get positive. As I think negative, I get negative. Now when you start to live this kind of life you guys are living, what happens is people, places, and things leave your life. It's called the law of repulsion. You're not vibrating with them anymore. And they start to move out. You like them, you love them, but they start to move out, and new people come in. The same with a job. Sometimes you wonder, why, why did I lose that job? Well, praise God, you lost the job because there's a better job coming, and you better remember that. You better remember that. <laughs> Something better is coming. You have just created what is called a vacuum. The vacuum says, well, let me tell you where it started. You can't put new wine in old wine skins. You gotta clean it out. You gotta get rid of that scum and that dirt and that bacteria. And then you got new pockets there. Well, you gotta get rid of that old job. You gotta get rid of those old people. You gotta get rid of those old thoughts. And you're creating a space. 
and that space brings something new in. Now, give up the idea that every day is going to be high energy, because it's not. The law of rhythm says we have high energy and low. But it doesn't say, and Christ doesn't say, you'll have high energy and low energy, and when you're in the low energy, you're depressed. Because you can feel contentment, and you can feel love, and you can feel peace when the energy's low. And it's going to happen. It happens from time to time. You know what I do? I'm not going to tell you. Well, I will. I go to bed. <laughs> I sleep for an hour. I wake up and I feel better. Sometimes we use too much energy. Or sometimes we're with somebody who steals our energy. Love, bless, and release them, gang. Love, bless, and release them. And you don't have to do anything else because God knows it starts to leave. They start to leave. They start to leave. So we're going to decide now. What do I want? I want more love in my life. I want more prosperity, abundance. Prosperity isn't about being wealthy, rich. It's about abundance everywhere. You know, I can get into a prosperity mood by sitting and thinking about the infinite mind of God. I can get into this wonderful space thinking about nature, thinking about love, thinking about the world in its beauty. And I get so full of gratitude because that's part of the game of life. Gratitude. Don't forget it. That's part of the, of the game of life, is to be grateful for everything you have. Sure, I had this procedure on my leg. It's been difficult to walk. Yesterday, I had to go for therapy. Two men, well, each separately, of course, came up to me and said, put your arm in my arm. They were veterans, both of them. They said, I'll walk you to where you need to go. It brought my heart into oneness with their heart because they were serving. And one of the things we must do is serve. When we serve one another, we are serving God because God is in you. So my friends, the whole idea is let's get into a state of love. Let's sit down with pencil and paper and write out your new life. Write out what you're releasing and write out what you're bringing in. And I promise you, if you do it in love, if you do it in gratitude, you'll have it out of nowhere and no way it will manifest. Thank you and God bless you.